Susie here, and I'm in the middle of conducting an experiment. So far, all my observations come to the same conclusion. Water falls in drops. The same size, the same shape, one after the other, and they never seem to change. It's like they're in some kind of uniform or club. Or maybe they're just copying each other. Copycats, copycats, copycats. Something strange is going on, and I want to find out what. Why does water fall in drops? So someone can get water out of the rain? Because you don't want too much rain to make a flood? Because water has to fall because it can't fly. It's liquid. Waterfalls, because like when there's a cliff, then they can't just go across. They have to just go downwards. They can't go across. Because there is gravity. And it splashes when it falls. Because it, it doesn't go up and down. It falls down instead of going up because there's too much gravity. It's because the clouds are crying. I think because it rains and drops. Yeah, maybe. I'm investigating further. What's happening to those water drops when they land? They hit the surface with a real thump and they get knocked out of shape. They form puddles. Puddle shapes. Hmm. Do you know what the puddle said to the rain? Drop in any time. Get it? Drop? Whew. There was very nearly a catastrophe here of a very soggy kind. Thank goodness I stopped pouring in time. But look, I've noticed something amazing. Look at the water. This is water, H2O. Why? A liquid, right? Oh, what's it doing sitting up above the rim of the glass? It's bizarre. It's like it's got a skin holding it all together. A bit like our skin, or the skin on cooling custard. Mmm, yum. Mm. But water is a liquid. It flows easily and gracefully. It's not a solid like our skin, or the skin on a custard. Mmm, yum. So what's it doing? If this water wants to be a smarty pants, let's see how high it can sit up above the rim. I'll pile some more on. Let's make a water tower. Whoops, um, maybe I need to be a little more subtle. I'll use this eyedropper and add the water drop by drop. Getting pretty high. Wow. Ah, so the water will only go so far before it spills. Right, I need to get to the bottom of this water. Or maybe that's the top, because there's something very interesting about the water surface. <laughs> Looky here, I'm testing that water surface theory and I've got paper clips floating on the surface of the water. Now that's not so amazing because lots of things float on water, but watch what happens when I try and float a paper clip by putting it in end first. Hmm, it sinks. But if I lay the paper clip out flat, and it's pretty tricky, you have to do it very gently, it floats. Look closer, look very closely, and you might be able to see how the paper clips dent the water. Now, if water is a liquid, how can the paper clips dent it? You know, so far I'm getting lots of questions, but not too many answers, yet. Right, let's get down to business. What exactly is water? Well, water is made up of molecules. Everything is made up of molecules. And molecules are so small, you couldn't see them with the human eye. 
In fact, they are the smallest part of a substance that still carries the properties of a substance. And these are water molecules. Well, they're actually balls of Play-Doh, but today they represent water molecules. And water molecules like to cling together. They're very, very friendly with each other. They really like each other. In fact, they like each other so much that if one was to go to the toilet, they all would. They like each other that much. They really stick together like glue. So that when pressure is put on one water molecule, other water molecules will follow. See? Let me show you with water. A little bit of pressure with my finger and the water molecules start to move. And they all join together and follow each other. And that's why water falls in drops. Those water molecules cling to each other as they fall and land. The reason why water appears to have a skin on it is because those molecules on the surface really cling together tightly. And that's called surface tension. Let's see some surface tension in action. Stand by, here it comes. The drops falling, the puddles, the overfull glass, and the dent in the water are all really good examples of, you guessed it, surface tension. Bubbles. The surface tension of a bubble is really, really strong. It will hold together and hold together, even though that air pressure is building up and stretching the bubble and stretching it until it can't take it anymore. And it pops. Roll up, roll up, it's time for a little water magic. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Okay, not that close, thank you. That's better. Now what if I told you I could magically pour water from this jug into this glass from this distance? Think I can do it? Well, watch and be astounded. Drum roll, please. Water magic at its best. You know, you could do this trick, or any of the experiments we try today. You might need a bit of a hand with this one, though, because it is a bit tricky. But practice it, and you'll astound your family, your friends, your cat, your dog. Have lots of fun, and don't forget the answer. It's surface tension. You can write to me at Tree Hut Productions, P.O. Box 34307, Birkenhead in Auckland. Kakite. Falls in drops. All the sh shame shape. Even the shame shot. Something comes next. <laughs> <laughs> Water drop by drop. Hey, Mum and Dad, thanks for paying your broadcasting fee.